Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to begin Good with afternoon. a bit of song, so I hope that you'll join me. Olam chesed ibane Yalalai, lai, lai, yalalai, lai Olam chesed ibane Yalalai, lai, yalalai, lai Olam chesed ibane Yalalai, lai, yalalai, lai Olam chesed ibane Yalalai, yaina, yalalai, lai. I will build this world from love. Yalalai, yaina, yalalai, lai. We must build this world from love. Yalalai, yaina, yalalai, lai. If we build this world from love, then God will build this world from love. Yalalai, yai, yai, yalalai, yai. Olam chesed ibane. Yalalai, yai, yai, yalalai, yai. Olam chesed ibane. Yalalai, yai, yai, yalalai, yai. Thank you for being a part of Shari Tefillah, this sacred congregation of meaning, connection, and purpose. We pray together, we learn together, we rejoice and mourn together. And we gather together in moments like this to find strength in one another, in our Jewish tradition, that we might go forth out into this broken world and do our part individually and as a congregation to be partners with God in the ongoing work of creation. Thank you for joining me this afternoon for this brief time of prayer and reflection as we gather virtually after the horrendous acts of violation and violence this past weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia and beyond. We'll have time to be together face to face, I'm sure. There are many vigils and events being planned and as plans become clear, we will share them with the congregation. So too, these remarks that I'm making today will be available on the synagogue's website, charitefilahnyc.org, by the end of today. And a recording of this video will also be available as well. So I invite you to be, uh, feel free to share them with friends or on email or social media. Included online will be some key organizations I'd encourage you to support should you be so moved to do so by these events. Today, in these few moments, I'll share a few reflections, a few poems that have struck me in recent days, and then close with a prayer. And I hope you'll find this time meaningful. Please note that while we can see each other, and I think there are about 27, 29 people on the call, which is great, um, all participants are on mute. Um, it didn't seem practical uh, in this space for us to all speak, although Jews, we like to speak all together at the same time. But, uh, but for now, um, you're in listen mode. Uh, I believe there's a chat feature if you want to um, make a comment on the lower right side. On the lower section, you can uh, click on chat and then there's a way for you to put messages uh, if you're so moved to do that as well. I am eager to hear your thoughts and reflections and your prayers as well, and we'll do that in the coming days. What are we to do in this moment in America in 2017? when the merit of Emma Lazarus's words on the Statue of Liberty, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, when those words have been marginalized by this presidential administration. In this moment, when a mosque burns in Minnesota and our president is silent. In this moment, how shall we respond when a car is turned into a weapon by a terrorist in Charlottesville, Virginia, when chance of Jew shall not replace us, reverberate from the mouths of unmasked, swastika-carrying bigots. 
In this moment in America, I thought of this haunting, these haunting and powerful words of Jewish author Aaron Zeitlin. He writes, Praise me, says God, and I will know that you will love me. Curse me, says God, and I will know that you love me. Praise me or curse me, and I know you will love me. Sing out my praises, said God. Raise your fist against me and revile, says God. Sing out graces or revile. Reviling is also a kind of praise, says God. But if you sit fenced off in your apathy, says God, if you sit entrenched in, I don't give a damn, says God. If you look at the stars and yawn, if you see suffering and don't cry out, if you don't praise and don't revile, then I created you in vain, says God. And a message of faith from Rabbi Karen Kadar. Lift your eyes and stare down evil. This is a spiritual response. We must be unequivocal in our name calling. The KKK, national supremacists, neo-Nazis, and unaffiliated bigots of all kinds are hateful and perpetuate acts of evil. Even the neighbor next door and the colleague in our office who say something offensive and intolerant only to end the remark with the popular disclaimer, no offense or anything, feed this evil inclination. Or the protesters for progressive causes fighting against prejudice and for freedom, yet espousing discrimination and exclusion based on religion, feed this evil inclination. I do not distinguish, Rabbi Kadar writes, hate is hate and we should say so. And when we do, we engage in spiritual discernment, discernment, discerning good from evil, blessing from curse, light from darkness. If these troubling and dangerous times teach us anything, it is not to be polite or diplomatic or shy when witnessing acts of hate, prejudice, racism, and discrimination. Never be silent. Moral clarity is spiritual experience. It is perhaps the greatest message of faith. For what is the purpose of compassion, of love, of kindness, of spiritual practice, if not to practice compassion, love, and kindness in the face of derision? Do not stand idly by ever. The practice of religion, faith, and spiritual intention is for two reasons. It is to give meaning to our inner life and purpose to our communal life, to heal the fragmented heart, and to repair a broken world. So lift your eyes, open your hearts, and speak up firmly. Be unequivocal, diligent, uncompromising in your vision of a world of wholeness, beauty, safety, and love. Be religious about it. And lastly, words from an unlikely place brought me comfort this week. The words of Bengali poet and 1913 Nobel Prize for Literature laureate, Rabindranath Tagore, he wrote, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee, into ever-widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. A moment has arrived in America, my friends. Mark this month, August 2017. Don't get me wrong, hate is not new this month. Anti-Semitism, racism, and bigotry are not new to America in 2017. We as Jews are blessed to live as freely in this nation as at any time in Jewish history. I really believe that. And yet we are not immune from hateful anti-Jewish rhetoric. Muslim Americans have been feared and targeted since September 11, 2001 and before. People of color have been marginalized in this land since before there was a United States of America. And that marginalization did not end with the civil rights movement of the 1960s. The Southern Poverty Law Center has been tracking 917 hate groups in this land of the free. That hate started long before the city of Charlottesville, Virginia decided to remove the statue of Robert E. Lee from the town square. 
But this month, all of that hate, all of that bile has exploded into view. This is a moment. Will it last beyond the news cycle? Will we be numbed by it all? Or will our collective conscious not allow us to be numb? Will we be silenced? Or will our mouths refuse to keep shut? Will we feel powerless? Or will our souls demand that we act? Holy One of Blessing, you command us not to stand idly by while our neighbors bleed. You command us 36 times in the Torah to love the stranger because we know what it means to be the stranger. God, you implore us not to forget because we know what it means when good people turn away. Dear God, give us strength now. Give us the courage to grapple with the moral implications of the flawed decisions we have made as a nation in our history and the ramifications those decisions have for our time. Help us to continue to comfort the shame of our, to confront the shame of our past, and in this way, to begin a process of healing. Help us to remember that we need to confront anger at direct angles, not oblique ones. Help us see hate and condemn it. Help us speak truth even in a time when there are those who would have us devalue objective truth, devalue right and wrong. Help our leaders know that the violent and murderous acts of Nazis and the counter protesters of those counter protests of those willing to fight them are not morally equivalent. The former was what Jews call a chilul Hashem, a desecration of your holy name. The latter was an act of spiritual resistance, of sacred nonviolence on behalf of all those created in your image. Oh God, help us both to remember and declare that racism. Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and xenophobia have no place in America. Holy One of Blessing, a moment has arrived in America. You have blessed us with wisdom and courage and strength and the knowledge of right and wrong. But only we can determine what will come of this moment. Will it be a moment of more violence or a moment of recognition, recognition reconciliation, and healing? Will this be a moment we can't bear to remember? a moment that we will eagerly allow to pass as the new cycle changes? Or will we remember this moment, transforming the outrage we feel now into potent action for justice? In the words of my colleague, Rabbi Josh Winston, we are not numb. We will continue to resist. We are not silent. We will continue to cry out. We are not powerless. As we end this time together, let's end as we begin with words of song. Again, these words will be available on the website, and there as well will be a list of organizations I encourage you to consider supporting as we move our work together. We will continue to work together as a community to be about more than just words, but about actions as well. But we begin in this moment with prayer, and I'm grateful to you for joining us. So I invite you please to join me in these words of song. Olam chesed yibane Yalalai yayla yalalai nai Olam chesed yibane Yalalai yayla yalalai nai Olam chesed yibane Yalalai yayla yalalai nai Olam chesed yibane Yalalai yai yai yalalai nai I will build this world from love Yalalai yai yai yalalai nai And we must build this world from love Yalalai yai yai yalalai nai if we build this world from love, yalalai, yai, yai, yalalai, yai, then God will build this world from love, yalalai, yai, yai, yalalai, yai. Thank you for being with us in this time. I'll see you soon. Take care. <laughs>